precious Father, we thank you tonight. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your care. Thank you for being the person you are. All honor to you, all glory and power and strength to you. All the wisdom, all the glory, all the praise, all adoration. To you, our God, to your King, to your Father. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your glorious name. Glory to God. Before you take your seats, before you take your seats, I want you to just close your eyes with me for one moment, please. In this wonderful presence of the Lord that you brought with you when you came, and the praises you have given to him, and he has received what you have given to him. Yes, he enjoys the praises of his people. Thank you, Father God. Blessed be your name. It is his people's praise he enjoys. It is his people's praise he inhabits. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Father God. Thank you. Father, we thank you for being our Father. We wanted to know tonight how much we appreciate you. We wanted to know tonight how much we are grateful to know that we are children of the Most High. We are not just your creation, but we are your children. Father, we thank you for all the provision you've made for us throughout our, throughout our time in the earth, Lord. Every provision that you know that we have need of, you have already made. Thank you, Father, for being the best Father. You are not just the good God, you are the best Father. We thank you and we honor you. We praise you, Lord. We thank you for the way you have spoken to us, the way you are speaking to us. Thank you for sharing your heart with us. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. It's an honor to hear the sound of your voice, to hear your instructions. Thank you for your good spirit you've given to us to guide us in all truth. Be glorified, Lord. Continue to be glorified in the midst of your people. And the saints of God say, amen. amen, amen, and amen. Glory to God. Could you just quickly shake the hands of one of the persons around about you? Maybe you've done it before, but just once again. I just love to see when you interact with each other. I know probably you did it before, but I just love to see that. There's a smile on faces. Uh, the body language says it all. It's wonderful to see. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Master. How are you today? You're blessed? I, I can almost hear you saying highly favored and flavored and anointed, appointed, and top and rising. Amen. Last week, Saturday, the Lord um, shared with us Again, some valuable information that was so helpful to us. And I believe all the things that he has shared thus far that we are, uh, we have applied those things. I am, I'm, I'm assuming that as of today, that we no longer cherish thoughts and words from others concerning us, but rather what he said about us. I'm assuming that we have made the words of the Lord, uh, what he said about us, uh, the basis from which we operate, which I believe if we do, will bring great joy and excitement because of all the things that he has to say about us. So we are going through what I would call a, a renovation in terms of our understanding. What he says about us is what is most important, not what anybody else says. So, of course, if what they said is the truth, then we need to change. But we are talking about in the context of what he shared with us last week, and we don't mean this in an arrogant sense where people do all kind of foolishness and say you don't care about what people say. I'm not talking about it in that light. We're talking about it in a light uh, based on what he shared with us last week concerning uh, the mindsets that we develop uh, because of the environment um, that we were in, the things that people said concerning us. We believe those things. We held to those things. We made it a part of our, uh, our, our behaviors only to find out that those are not the things that God truly said about us. And to find out what he said about us is what is written in the scriptures, what he has said about us. And so we need to now begin to see in his light, we see light. We need to understand now what are the things he said about you and me. And those are the things we ought to believe and hold to and allow it to form our attitude. 
because God spoke from a place of perfection. Individuals spoke from places of imperfection. God saw everything. He knew everything. He made us, and he knew exactly who we are. And when he spoke to us, we should not doubt or even question, because we, many of us probably grew up, heard so much negative things about ourselves, that when God began to speak to us about good things, we have a hard time of believing because of the negativity that we've allowed to fill our minds. So he said he's purging us from that, and he wants us to begin to see ourselves the way he sees us so that we can begin to enjoy all the beautiful things that he said about us and walk the way he wants us to walk. Amen, saints? Amen. Last week, I was in a meeting. While I... <laughs> this is very interesting. So last week I attended a meeting. While in the meeting, the Lord revealed to me the importance of the people's consciousness of his knowledge of their hearts. When I left the meeting, he told me to share with you what he shared with me on this matter. Most of us, or many of us, are not aware that God knows everything that goes on in our hearts every minute of the day and every second of the day as long as we live. All our motives, imaginations, secrets of our hearts are known to God and he wants us to live with this consciousness in mind as long as we live on planet earth i know this very simple and we would have heard this before and for most of us if not all of us we can recall certain passages that give reference to the knowledge of god concerning us but in as much as he asked me to relate this to you again because of his knowledge of us i sense that he knows that we are not consistently conscious of this fact that God is observing us internally every minute, every second of the day, looking inside of us, our hearts, seeing all that is going on, all of our thoughts and imaginations, um, thoughts that are not yet manifested in terms of where it became visible through mannerisms and behaviors and everything else. And he told me, he says, Limas, no one can really and truly serve me if they do not understand my ability to know all that goes on. And, and brethren, <laughs> this to me has been a really it's more than an enlightenment it became a foundation for me many years ago when i think this was the first revelation that god gave to me in regard to his ability to know all things and i think when i heard it first i was amazed and i was shocked really and the first thing it did to me is that i began to think about all the wrong thoughts that i would have had and the, the ideas and all of those things. And I felt ashamed many, many years ago. I felt ashamed, my God, just to know that he knew all of these things. And that every other thought I would have from here on, that he's aware of it and he knows it. And wherever we are, he's not just seeing what is done externally. He's seeing on the inside. He's listening to our unspoken words our imaginations and all of our motives behind everything that we do, they are all known to God and he sees it and he understands it and he knows it. But he said that we are not conscious of this on a daily basis. So he wants us to know that we are in a relationship with someone who knows everything about us. What a relationship to be in. We would like to know that we are in a relationship where we can hide certain things from others that they don't know our true heart. But really and truly, I wouldn't call that a very solid relationship. Really. 
and oftentimes we don't because we're afraid of how the person would respond to us. But one of the things we need to know is that God loves us and his love for us, his love for us supersedes everything that's happening with us. His love for us is designed in such a way that he has released to us instructions to guide us in the right path because he loves us. And his, his love for us um, administers patience, long-suffering, and mercy. But most importantly, he told me that he wants you to keep this in your mind. He wants you never to forget this. That the God that we serve, that we stand before, that we come here, we came here, we worship and we praise, he saw us before we came. He saw all of our thoughts, attitude, and intentions, and everything. And while we were sitting here, while we were praising, he was watching and listening. And so he knew the song that we give to him that is, was really towards him and nobody else. He knew everything we did, whether it was for him or for ourselves or just for others to see in our songs and our clapping and everything else that we did. And so he wants us to know this so that we will serve him truly and we will become more conscious of him than, than we are of others. So imagine you and I living our lives being more conscious of God than we are of people. So he wants us to keep this in mind. I remember when he told me that the very first time. I came back from New York on a, 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 a conference. Having been to a conference, I was sent to. I was asked to be a part of myself and some other brethren. And a word came forth in the conference from one of the ministers that the Lord wanted us when we go back to our respective homes or cities to spend seven days in fasting. So when I came back from the conference, I don't know if the other brethren did it, but I spent that time. At the end of fasting, the Lord began to speak, and this was not a word that was released in the conference. I mean, it was totally, I mean, it's like night and day. The Lord began to reveal that he knows everything that I'm thinking, every imagination. And, you know, you often heard, well, God knows the heart, because we've said it so many times. But for the first time, that word became a revelation to me. And I became conscious of that fact. And like I said earlier on, I felt ashamed when I was made aware of this. And he said, as long as you live, I know every motive of the heart, every thought, everything you're thinking, every imagination, the secret of your heart, I know it. What that did to me, it brought me to a place of being naked. Actually, he said, you are naked before me every day. Your thoughts are naked. Your motives are naked. You are naked before me. And so that, that leaves me with, well, <laughs> you might as well tell him everything because he already knows everything. And if we want to have a relationship with God, you have to get to the place of being honest with yourself and honest before God. And he said, unless we have an understanding of this foundation, we can live a hypocritical life or a fake life just trying to impress people. And for many of us, that's how it has been and still is. So he says, with this relationship, with this understanding, it leaves you naked before the Lord. So nothing is hidden. So then... You can't help but to tell him what he already knows. So my thought was, but Lord, if you already know what sense does it make to tell you? He said, but I want to hear it from you. I want you to talk to me about everything that you did not know that I know, but now you know that I know everything. And as long as you live, talk to me about everything. Everything about everything. Everything you feel, everything you think, every motive, everything. And so what it did for me, it made me more conscious of God is as if he's standing there 24 7 as opposed to people watching you and listening to you so 
every thought that comes to my mind that came through my mind that was negative and you and I you know what is negative immediately I said Lord I just thought X Y Z. I told him exactly what I thought exactly what came to my mind he said that's it that's how I wanted to be before me all the time so the, the, the thing is he said he said he said I am not shocked by the thoughts that come that came through your mind I wanted to know that nothing shocks me and nothing surprises me so now I didn't know all of those things about God I just know God is there if you need some things you can go to him and pray but I never knew all those things so in the relationship he began to relate to me some things about this person that I did not know and now that I know that I can't hide anything from him I decided well of course whether I choose to be honest or not it might as well be honest because he knows now I want you to keep in mind that we are in a relationship it is not just a duty that we do or some social club thing that we do when we come together the life does not stop when we leave here when we say good night see you next week it doesn't stop your life before God continues when you leave here the very thoughts everything that happens inside of you is before the Lord 24 7 and he wants that consciousness to stay with us and so as I began to relate based on everything everything that I feel when I get angry and I upset with certain things and he don't want me to put on a mask and uh, sort of you know like and everything is cool and give a smile everything is good when it's in your heart it is not good say so, Lord I'm angry Lord I feel so angry I just I can cuff this person down Lord I can just he said don't be afraid to tell, tell me exactly what you feel Lord I can just slap this person up the head no he said I'm not shocked by you saying that because I see it in your heart and then he brought the scripture passage to me where David said you desire truth from the inward part that inward part of there's that part of us that people didn't see or have not seen and uh, they are not able to see you desire truth from there the inward part and David knew that God desired truth from the inward part and so when I would say certain things like that to him then he began to give me the wisdom as to what I need to do so as to not to get to that place so what it what it what it did for me it, it sort of there's a lightness that you feel so you don't have to wait for a prayer line because people have a lot of unconfessed things in their heart because nobody knows it it's there and it's stifling you if you keep sweeping garbage under the carpet before long you have a lot of stuff because people can't see it you know they can see everything else except there because all the garbage is under the carpet God sees it and if our life if we truly want to worship God if we truly want to serve God you have to come clean with God all the pretense all the mask has to be taken off you cannot be in a relationship with God and masking because it's not going to help the relationship and it's not going to help you so he told me he said I want you just as I shared with you I want to talk to the people and let them know because they aren't aware of this there is not a an ongoing consciousness like it comes sometimes for a few seconds and it goes but he wants us to have this consistent consciousness of the eyes of God could you imagine if the Lord were to do something that's one of the things he, he told me when I'm when I was sharing this message and I shared it before suppose the Lord were to take all the thoughts and imagination of your heart that you thought of a few days ago up to this present moment and put it up here for everybody to see it how would you feel every thought every imagination every motive of your heart everything that you thought about and put it up here for, you would want everybody to see that how many of you would like this, everybody to see every thought that you have every imagine imagination I'm not seeing any hands Mm, so you have some thoughts they don't want people to see now I'm just teasing you all of us but the amazing thing is he said you are in a relationship with me and I want you to know that you are naked I want to repeat this and you continue to be naked before me 24 or 7 see that's why when God judges us he judges based on our hearts because he knows 
That's why when he deals with us, he deals with us based on our heart. And he don't look at things the way we do. And I'm going to show you a passage in just a bit. We're going to look at that in just a bit. But when I heard these things, I remember I began, we were on the radio, on, on 7.30 radio. Uh, it was the AM band at the time. We had a Thursday uh, evening program. Every Thursday evening, those of you remember that. And after that understanding, I selected a song called A Pure Heart. We, would begin the, we normally would begin the program with that song. And for a period of a few years, that was my main message. I remember one lady came uh, who was listening to the program uh, in her vehicle, decided to drop by the station. When we came off air, she came up to me and she said, I want to ask you this question. I was listening to the program, and I heard you say that the Lord knows everything, every, every, everything. She said, Does he, do you mean that he knows every, 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 everything? And she went on like that. And I said, yes, every, every, everything. And that's all she asked. Then she walked away in a, in a sense of being surprised, shocked, and amazed. And I don't know what else was, was in her mind. And she just left. And for that period of time, it was the first time I felt so relief. Knowing that I could have talked to the Lord about anything at any time, no matter what I feel, no matter what anger, whatever the feeling is, whatever the thoughts are, whatever the emotion, whatever the, the plans are, I could have shared it with him. And so he reminded me of a passage of scripture found in, in 1 Samuel chapter 16, from verse 6, that's when the Lord rejected um, Saul from being king that he spoke to, to, to the prophet Samuel to go down to the house of Jesse. And, 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 and this king that God sent Samuel to anoint was not just simply a replacement for Saul. God had a plan way long before that. But the point here is, after rejecting Saul from, being as, uh, uh, from his kingly, kingly position, God spoke to the prophet Samuel, sent him to the house of Jesse, and told him that he has selected a king from among the sons of Jesse, but he didn't tell him which one it was. So uh, Prophet Samuel did not know. Prophet Samuel was known to be the prophet in Israel. Everybody knew whenever he shows up into the city, uh, the scripture says sometimes the elders will tremble to know what is going to come. Is it, is it judgment? What is it? Because he came. Went to the house of Jesse, and from verse 6, we want to look at what uh, the prophet saw. So here's Prophet Samuel, went on to the house of Jesse, and he said, so it was when he came, when they came, that he looked at Eliab and said, surely the Lord's anointed stand, or stand, the Lord's anointed is before him. Okay? So he went down, he saw Jesse's first son. And based on what he saw, because the Lord told him that one of the sons, but he didn't tell him which one it was. So the prophet made a mistake. He messed up. This great, awesome prophet messed up. Because he saw him and what he saw, the external appearance and all the fittings of a king. He said the Lord's anointed stand before him. Before who him? Not just uh, Samuel, but stand before the Lord. So watch this. Verse 7. But the Lord said to Samuel, the prophet do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature don't look there because I have refused him for the Lord does not see as man sees let's stop there for a moment God don't see things the way we do that is a general statement God does not see things the way man sees it. God sees the very intent. He sees the depth of it. He sees the very core of it. So whenever he makes a judgment, it comes from a perfect understanding of the thing. That's how God sees. We are limited in sight, but God is not. So the Lord says, for the Lord, this is God saying to Samuel, for the Lord does not see as man sees. But how does man see? 
So he explained how man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance. He looks at what appears outwardly. So man always look at the external. Man does not see the internal, the fullness of the internal. The only part of the internal he sees is when it is manifested externally. But the secret plans that is not, uh, that are not, uh, the, pl the secret plans which are not manifested externally, he doesn't see that, but God sees that. So, the Lord does not see as man sees, for man looks at the outer appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Outwardly, he looked right. He had the appearance of a king, but he did not have the heart of a king. So, Samuel was wrong. And it was humbling for him to recognize that he was wrong, that he asked for the rest of Jesse's sons. And they all passed before him, one by one. They passed, those who were in the house. And then after the, the, the seventh person went by, God didn't say, he decided he's not going to say anything now. He's going to just listen. <laughs> He's not going to talk anymore. He's just going to listen to God. No longer he's going to watch and say, this is the one. He will only say now if God says. So he let them pass by and they passed one by one. God didn't say anything. And all those who were in the house passed by. God did not say anything. So now I can imagine the confusion in his mind. Because God said, there's a king here. And he said, he's, he has refused this one. And so all the other sons, so he said, Jesse, is there any, is this all his son? He said, I have one more, but he's, look, he's in the field. And this is what he's doing. So Jesse did not, did not even mention David. He did not even mention his name, really, uh, until Samuel asked if this was all your sons. And he said, we're not going to sit, we're not going to rest, we're not going to do anything until he comes. And as he came, entered the door, the Lord said, this is the one. So the point here is, God does not see as man sees. Man looks outside, man looks for an at appearance, God does not look there. God sees inside, and man here means generally, that's how God views all human beings generally. He watches inside of our hearts. Every human being on planet earth, in every place, the eyes of God is piercing on the inside. Every thought, every motive of the heart, God hears them individually, every person on the planet. And knows individually who we are and where we are. The awesome power of God. So, to all of us here tonight, this is how it is with God. So, he has called you and I into a relationship. And in this relationship that we're in, we don't know him fully, but he knows us fully. And he sees us every day. And he hears us every day. And he wants us to be aware of this. Because he says he wants us to be truthful to him. So many of us could be living a lie. Yeah, we can say hallelujah, praise the Lord outwardly. People think well of that. Wow, that was good. The person was praising the Lord and all of that. But what is happening inside of your heart? Are you more conscious of God or are you more conscious of how you appear before men? How they see you? And for most of us, that's the position that we took and have taken. How people see us as opposed to how God sees us. So, he wants us to keep this in our minds. So David from that very moment, he told me, David from that very moment had an understanding that stayed with him and guided him throughout his reign as a king. That even when he messed up and tried to hide it, he saw another dimension of God's revelation that God sent Nathan the prophet to him. Even though Nathan was not there, nobody knew. And he thought he could have concealed that. But here it was that God who knew all things, knew exactly what he did, sent, spoke to Nathan, sent Nathan to him, and Nathan released the word of the Lord, and he understood again a further depth of the knowledge of God. He knows the secret. That's why he was able to say, God knows the secrets of the heart. 
He knows. So as he journeyed through his reign as a king, he kept this before him. He understood. To the point he said, your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against. He became very conscious of that innermost part of his being because he knew that God knows. So when the time came for him to vacate his kingly throne because God chose his son Solomon to do both, uh, to be king and to build a temple that David began preparing for, Solomon offered his son one of the most powerful advice that a father can give to a son or a father can give to a children or a mother can give to their children. And he was able to offer that advice because of his personal experience with God. And he saw to, of all the other experiences that he would have had, this seemed to be the most outstanding one. And he knew that in order for Solomon to be successful in his reign as a king and to do what God has called him to do the way it ought to be done, that he needed to have this knowledge. So we looked at a passage, let's look at a passage found in, in 1 Chronicles chapter 28, and we're going to look at verse 9. 1 Chronicles chapter 28 and verse 9. 1 Chronicles 28 verse 9. And hear what, hear the instruction or the advice that David gave to his son Solomon. And when you think about David, he, he was a mighty man of valor. Won many battles. He could have probably shared with um, Solomon how he fought and, and what he did and some, some techniques and all those things. No. He just knew, Solomon, what you need is this. Because this is going to hinge upon you being successful or failure if you don't follow through on it. So, uh, First Chronicles 20 verse 9, it says, As for you, my son Solomon, know the God of your father. Let, let's just stop there for a moment. Know the God of your father. So David gave his son Solomon the best, as I said before, the best advice a father could give to his son. Know the God of your father. This implies that Solomon did not know God the way David did. He didn't. So to serve God acceptably, one must first know him. You cannot please somebody if you don't know them. And you cannot be successful in what the person has assigned you to do unless you know the person and hear the command and instructions from from that individual. It's like an employer. The Lord said it to me tonight. He says, Limit is like an employer, an employee being employed by an employer. And the employee said, Oh, I'm going to just do it my way. I'm going to do the job my way. No, you can't do the job your way. You did not employ, you did not employ yourself. How can you do it your way? Like people say, Well, you know, everybody can, you know, can serve God their own way. <laughs> no, there's no such thing. It is, it is from the knowledge of God we can serve God effectively. Outside of the knowledge of God, you cannot serve God effectively in the way God wants you to. God is the one who sets the parameters, how we should serve him. We don't serve him anyway. You have to know him. And so David said, know the God of your fathers. And again, I want to repeat, this implies that Solomon did not know God as his father did. So to serve God in such a way, Solomon had to know him. So Solomon had been chosen to be king and also to build a temple, but he did not know the God who chose him. So this important advice is directed to every one of us as if our names are mentioned individually. To you and me, he's saying to us, Tonight, in this house, in this place, and wherever you are listening, know the God of your father. Meaning, having a personal revelation and an understanding of this God. You and I, saints, need to have this. It's important. It's important. 
The true knowledge of God should produce in us, number one, love for God. Love for God and all mankind. Number two, reverence for him. Holiness towards God, totally set apart for him. To him. Dependence on him. Confidence in his word. Obedience and a heart of gratitude to him. The true knowledge of God in us should produce that. Very important. Know the God of your father. Solomon, know the God of your father. Know my God. I want you to know something about, I want you to know this God, how he operates. I've walked with him. He is my God. I learned some things about him that you must also come to know. And he said, in essence, one of the things I've learned and we look at it in just a bit. He said, now know the God of your father and serve him with a loyal heart and with a willing mind. Service to God must be from a loyal heart. <laughs> Not external performances. It's a whole heart attitude. This is the kind of service that is required. And I want you to hear that this is not just related to Solomon. Holy Spirit is sending this to every one of us tonight. This is how God ought to be served. All that we do with him and for him must be in this way. So let us hear David by the Holy Spirit speaking to all of us tonight. This God who knows our hearts and knows everything that goes on on the inside, serve him. And he knows whether our hearts are loyal or not. Or not. He knows this. He, you know, we can't hide this. Serve him with a loyal heart and a willing mind. To be loyal is to be devoted. To be loyal is to be devoted. To be dependable, reliable, trustworthy, and dutiful, meaning attentive or obediently fulfilling one's duty, dutiful. And this is consistent, and this is done from the heart, willingly, not prompted by rewards from others or acolytes or applause from others. This is an exciting exercise that happens in the heart because he knows. So everything that we do for him or every request or requirement that he asks of us, he is watching how we are responding from our hearts. And he wants us to know this because our service is to him who sees our hearts. And what he calls for is hearts. He calls for hearts which are devoted, devoted hearts. Singleness of mind. Purposeful in our movements that we are more conscious of God than we are of everyone else. So a loyal heart is a heart wholly uh, dedicated to the Lord, one that is not divided. It is not divided. David told Solomon to serve God completely and willingly, aware that the Lord knows every person's thoughts and motives. With a, with a loyal heart and with a willing mind. Choose a place in which we choose to will. We choose. I will from my heart. I do this freely. Not for rewards. 
And God, when he looks at us and he sees that willing heart, that loyalty, I'm committed to this, even when I don't feel like it. Lord, this is what you want. I do it from my heart as unto you. When he sees us, that's what he sees. And all that is rendered to him comes in that when God knows we can't impress God, God cannot be impressed. We can't fool God. God is not fooled. He cannot be fooled. We can't impress him. We can't fool him. He knows. He knows this. And it says, for the Lord searches some hearts. Is it? Wow. So, again, going back to what he said. The Lord searches all hearts. Every one of us. 24-7. He searches all hearts. And what else? And he understands all, all, not some. He searches all hearts. He understands all the intention or the intent or the motives of the heart. So every day of our lives, he is looking and he sees our motive, whether they are pure or whether they are corrupt in all that we do. He knows the motive behind it. If I give you something, he knows the motive why I give it to you. If I do something for you, he knows the motive. And he knows whether that motive is acceptable to him. He knows. When God rewards us, it is not just what we do. It's the heart from which it came. And he wants us to know that. So what man sees and man may applaud each other for may not even deserve an applaud from God <laughs> because the motive was not right. It's amazing. So God don't see things the way others see it. So he sees the intention of the thoughts. So Solomon said, this advice I want you to know as you serve God because he has chosen you. He has chosen you to do X, Y, Z. So you need to understand that this God who has employed you, has anointed you, you must serve him with a heart that is loyal, committed to him consistently, no division in your heart, because he will know. He will know. Others may not know, but he knows. So the Lord searches all hearts and he understands the intent or the intention of the thoughts. And watch this. If you seek him, meaning with all your heart, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. He said, now, consider now, for the Lord has chosen you to build a house for the sanctuary. Be strong and do it. So he passed on, I mean, what an, admon what an admonition, what an advice. As the Holy Spirit wants us to know, all of us tonight, that we are standing before this same God. <laughs> And he wants us to be aware of this. Just as David did for his son in praying for the people, he prayed, and I think it is in, uh, uh, in chapter 29 of the same book, First Chronicles, I think it's 29, somewhere there, chapter 29, where he prayed for the people, and he asked the Lord to fix their heart towards him. First Chronicles is 29, verse 10. Let's look at First Chronicles 29 and verse 10. He became so conscious of this heart business that even his prayer, in his prayer for the people, is amazing. He said, therefore, David, bless the Lord before all the assembly. And David said, Blessed are you, Lord God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, and the glory. Could you imagine somebody praying like that, knowing exactly that God is listening to what you're saying? You know, this is amazing. I've had some incident where I've been in groups where people were asked and called upon to pray. And while they were praying, they were more conscious of how they, uh, uh, the grammatical, 
how their grammar sounded. They were more conscious of who were listening to them as opposed to talking to God. And many times I've had to say to people, when you're praying, you're not talking to people. Don't care who's listening. At that moment, you cut everybody off. You are talking to God. But we are more conscious and God sees that. When he looks at us, he says, this person is not talking to me. They're saying some words that sounds good for people around him to hear. They're not talking to me. When we talk to God, we just zip everybody out, out of the picture. So at the end of your praying, you don't go and ask people, how did my prayer sound? Well, you weren't talking to God. You, you, you want people to know how, oh, yeah, your prayer sounded nice. You weren't talking to me. When you're praying, you're talking to God. Therefore, it doesn't matter who is listening to you. Nobody is greater than God. You don't have to try to dot your I's and, and, and cross your T's. You talk to God from your heart. He desires truth from where the inward part. And the truth is, saints, when somebody is really talking to God, if you're in the spirit, you can feel it. You can know it. You just know it. You just know, man, that the connection is real. When somebody just saying something, you just know they're just making a set of noise. And they ain't saying nothing because you're not talking to God. Because you're, you're so much conscious about who's watching and who's listening. And then you want to know how you sound. Or you're praising God and you, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. It just, you just, you know, because you're just trying to get people to get riled up and all of that. But you're not really praising God because he looks at the heart and you're not directing the praise to him. If the praise is directed to God, people, brethren, when we are really, genuinely, sincerely from our heart praising God, the atmosphere will change. I tell you the truth. Once you lock into God, something happens. So most, many times, we hear, I'm not just talking about here, you hear a lot of noise. Because people are very knowledgeable on how to say certain things and they say it. But it's, it feels empty and so dry. And you ask him, but Lord, this is your word, but why is, why is it so dry? And then he will say to you, well, they're just showing off what knowledge they have. But as the word of God, it's supposed to be filled with life. You can speak the letter without the spirit. The letter kills, but the spirit gives life. And to, to, to release the word of the Lord with the Holy Spirit, on a, with the right heart, with the right motive, not to show how much you know. And then say we're praising. Uh, how good I can praise. I can praise better than everybody else. No, when we praise, when we praise God, it must be that we are praising God. If I said, Lord, I thank you, all of my being must be focused on the Lord that I'm thanking. Lord, I bless your name. It should be that I'm saying to God, I'm not even, I'm not even, not even looking, I'm not even aware that you're listening to me. I'm saying to God, Lord, I bless your holy name. And all he receives it. Because when he looks at us, all of our hearts are saying it. Because we're doing it to him. We don't care who's watching, who's listening. Of course, if you're talking to people, you have to speak in a way that they can understand. But the motives must be the motive, must be right, in that you're saying it because you want to channel them to God, and that has to be the motive. It's not that, okay, we're going to talk about uh, finances because the motive is I want your money. Somebody, you can feel the motives. But God responds to what is pure from the heart. Because he sees that. And so if we all are more conscious of standing before God than we are standing before others, everything that we do would be different. People can be fooled, but not God. <laughs> Can't. It is impossible. So he wants us to know this. 
You, you can't try to put on God by being merely religious. It has to be real and should be real. So here is David. And you know, this, this reminded me of when Solomon was dedicating the temple to God and all the people who were there. He wasn't just sounding good for the people to hear him. If that was the case, the glory that entered the house would not have entered the house. He was talking to God to the degree that while he was praying, the glory of God came into the place. When you pray, when you touch his God, that's what happens. When your whole being, that's why he said, if you, if you search for me, if you seek me with all of your heart, you'll find me. You'll understand me. You'll know things about me that I want you to know. But all of your heart must be involved and we can't put that on. He sees it. All of our hearts. If you seek me with all of your heart, you will find me. When you search for me with all of your heart, you will find me. And with all that we do in our search, in our praying, in our seeking through the word and to pray, he's watching our heart. Is it that you want my glory to show up how much you have, how much power you have? I have power, you know. I have real power. You know, and all the things that we say, the cliche that we use, that sounds biblical, but it's self-motivated. There's no real desire to glorify God. Or we say, you know, God, hey, somebody tell you something that's great. Well, yeah, give God the glory. You can hear the shallowness of that. Because you don't really mean that. So one of the things I do, when I go places being ministered and hear all the things people say, I would say, you know, thank God, thank God. When I get home, the very first thing I do, and as I do whenever I leave here, the first thing that I do, I get home, I go on my knees, thanking him for the privilege to come and communicate to you the things that you've heard. And I understand this, I understand this about God. Once your heart is genuine for truth, Genuine to really serve him, he shows you the way. He will show you the way. You really want to follow God. You don't want to go astray. You want to do what is right. Even if you messed up, you really want to do right. You really, honestly, sincerely, wholeheartedly, he will show you the way. This is not the God who will turn your way. Once your heart is like that. You really want to serve him. You really want to do what is right. You really want to know the truth, to walk in the truth. That, that, that's your heart. God, I tell you the truth. He will make a way. He will show you because that's where your heart is. That's it. So David is praying here. He's praying. Blessed are you, Lord God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, and the glory, the victory, and the majesty. For all that is in heaven and in earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord. And you are exalted as head over all. Both riches and honor comes from you. And you reign over all. In your hands is power to give might. He's blessing God. Oh, glory to God. In your hand is to make great. And to give strength to all. Now therefore, our God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. Feel the spirit of these words. Can you feel it? Can you feel the spirit of these words? And now therefore, O Lord, we thank you and praise your glorious name. But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to offer so willingly as this? For all things comes, come from you, and of your own we have given to you. And he went on. But the part I want to get to is what he prayed and fix your heart towards him. That's what I'm looking for. I haven't found it as yet. I need, to, I need to get that part. Let me see if it's, if it's, if it's verse, if it's Second Chronicles. Uh, but I really want to get this. How he prayed that God will fix the heart of the people towards him. 
He wanted them to have a right, the right heart. Let's go back in verse 28 and see if it's somewhere there. Back pardon? Verse 18 of what? First Chronicles 29 and verse 1. Very good. Thank you so much. That's it right there. Thank you. Verse 18. O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, our fathers, keep this forever in the intent of the thoughts of the heart of your people and fix their heart towards you. My goodness. Whoa. Jesus. Keep this. One of you said to them, keep this in the intent of the thoughts of the hearts of your people and fix their heart towards you. Fix their heart towards you. And then he went on to pray for Solomon, verse 19, and give my son Solomon a loyal heart, a heart that is devoted, that is committed, a loyal heart to keep your commandments and your testimonies and your statutes to do all these things and to build a temple for which I have made provision. And David said to all the, the assembly, now bless the Lord your God. So all the assembly bless the God of their fathers and bow their heads and prostrated themselves before the Lord. And the, it's amazing. This is honestly genuinely, sincerely. So when, when I, I ask you something, let's praise the Lord. And I know you do it uh, obediently, but it has to just go beyond you just doing it obediently because I ask, or uh, somebody has asked, it has to be because I choose to, I want to, he deserves to, so that when each and every one of us begin to do that, and he's looking at us because he knows our heart. He knows the intent of our heart. He knows our thoughts. He said that we're not forced to. He said that we're not just singing some songs because, you know, we're singing some songs, looking at the time, okay, um, how much more songs to go. And you can't feel God's presence with this kind of attitude. No. Oh, we're praising, watching how this person's doing. Oh, this person's a little bit too loud. And we have all these things going on on the inside. And expect to feel the presence of God in an awesome way. No. No, saints, it don't work like that. It don't. We have to be so fixatious. Our hearts, we are set. And, and this is an attitude. We, we're saying, thank you, Lord, because you deserve our thanks. You deserve, or we can say, Lord, you're ma magnificent, Lord. You're magnificent. You're, you're fighting a war. What is that? Hey, hey stop. Hey, hey. <laughs> should we shout? Of course we should. We get excited? Of course. God knows we're excited being. But with all of our excitement, let it be genuine. When we dance before the Lord, when we play music, you know, I, I, I don't understand for the life of me. You, you're playing a guitar before the Lord. And there's no sign that you're really touching God with that. It should be that you're playing, you're playing so much before God that people get healed by your music because you're not listening, you're not just merely playing that people see how skillful you are. You are ministering to God. We have to learn how to minister to God from the heart. We can't just put it on, saints. He don't accept it like that. He, do, he doesn't. In everything we do, in our interaction with our brothering, he wants us to know he's monitoring what is going on on the inside of us. Everything that we do. And this is like this 24 or 7. Always. Always. So he said, Lemoth, go to the people and tell them. As I have shared this with you, many aren't aware of this. And I want service that is willing and loyal. And I see whether it is loyal or not. I cannot be fooled. Tell them. 
exactly all the things that I told you in regard to this matter. Say to them. See, because God, I, I'm not with you everywhere. God is. Something happened, right where it happened on the very spot you know is wrong, right there on the spot, the very thought, you can talk to God right there. Because you're both, it's like you're living consciously of him. He's always there. He's always there. And so, God, I'm, I'm saying sorry for the same thing again. He said, that's all right. Not that he condones it, but that he gives you the strategy of what you need to do next. And so you follow those instructions and enjoy the relationship with somebody who knows you 100%. So get all the fake and the pretense and impression of others out of the window. Take off the mask. Take off the mask. Off, off, off. Out the door. Throw it away. We're not serving just each other. We're serving God. <laughs> We're serving God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. When we make our excuses, God knows whether we're genuine or not. He knows. He sees. And he, wanted, he wants us to know, I am with you always. We rejoice with our God. Lord, Lord, I thank you. You're with me always. Yeah, but I'm with you and all that you're doing. All, and all that's going on inside of you. So we come to the place, Lord, I'm sorry. Don't, don't make any excuse. Don't beat around the bush. I remember, his, I remember him saying to me, <laughs> he says, uh, something, I can't remember exactly what it was, but I was, you know, trying to nice him up first before I get to the point. So, Lord, you're wonderful. You're glorious. You're marvelous. He said, Lemoth, get to the point. <laughs> first up, get to the point. You don't try to nice up God. <laughs> get to, that's, that's what God is. Get to the point. So let me nice him up first, and then I'll just tell him. We do that with people. You no, know, no, with God. Just tell him. And it's all right with him. So we don't want to just nice it up. Nice it, no, no. Just, just tell him as it is. Thank you, son. As it is. And he hears you. And so we can have this wonderful. Lord, I know I, know I can't fool you. I know you see everything. I know you know everything. I thank you for you. And, and again, you, you, you'll be so appreciative, appreciative of his mercies and his kindness and his love and his care. And you feel a sense of cleanness inside where there's nothing inside of you that you have not confessed before the Lord or mentioned before him, even though you know that he sees it. You know to try to put on a mask. Because you're not, you're not trying to impress people. Because that's your heart. You're not trying to impress anybody. And it is such a freedom. I'm not trying to impress you. I just want to turn you to him. I have no other motives. I have no other motives. I just want you to get to know him and enjoy him because he's so wonderful. I have no other motive than you know God and walk in the ways of God. It has to be what is inside. And it comes out. And it is simple. It is not complicated. You can enjoy God. When you're driving, when you're alone, you can never be bored alone if you truly know God. There's no such thing as being bored. People are bored with themselves. You bore your own self? No. No. You should enjoy God. If you by yourself are boring yourself, or you be somebody else, you're bored. Well, no, no, you're not. There. But we have God. <laughs> Hello, somebody. We have the best. I said to him, I said, I said, Lord, I've been making a boast of you when I go on the radio. I told you before that wherever, wherever platform you send me, I'm going to make such a boast of you. I want the people to know that you're the most beautiful being the universe has ever known. Lord, I just want to say this everywhere I go. I want to say it. The highest platform you have, I just want to say this. But I want to make such a boast about you because of what I've come to know. Because that's, that's who he is. This is the passion that moved me inside. But it didn't happen overnight. It happened when he began revealing to me his person. 
and it's a wonderful thing for me to hear him say to me that he is my friend. We talk like somebody talking, like, you know, you and I talking. We talk like that. <laughs> you know, yeah, we talk like that. Yes. <laughs> so well, look at me, strange. Yes, we talk like that. And I can share whatever. I don't have to be afraid to tell him whatever I feel. Nor, ha nor do I have to be bothered. And he's the one who tells me after, okay, I heard you. I heard what you say, but now, this is what my word says. This is what I want you to do. And it's now for me to follow the instruction that is given after I share with him. Simple as that. People... We may, religion have made this thing so complicated. It is not complicated. It's not how much we do for God. Oh, the fire this and the this and the that and all these gymnastics that we do. It is a simple relationship. The power of God working through us. We remain submissive. We listen to him. We enjoy God. He enjoys us. He flows through us. And it's wonderful. That's ministry. You, you don't resign from that. You resign when you're dead. And that's what it is. I heard somebody said, I met a preacher in the airport. He's going abroad, was going abroad and said um, to me, I'm coming back because um, I have to preach for so-and-so uh, because uh, he is celebrating uh, how much years in ministry. I said, excuse me? What, what do you mean? <laughs> I said, where, where, where do we get all this religious nonsense from? He, he opened his eyes wide. You, you, you celebrate how much years? How much years did Jesus celebrate in ministry? And he said, he just do the will of God. Where do we get all this stuff from? Check the Bible. Is it there? Paul said, well, today I'm celebrating how much years in ministry. You are so excited doing God's will. You are celebrating Jesus all the way. Glory to God. People, I don't know, I may sound strange. I may sound strange. I may sound strange. But that, these are the things he tells me. For people to see how much, how much years. I, 50 years in ministry. <laughs> but what is that? What does that mean? Celebrate him. He had 50 years in ministry. What is ministry? The life of God flowing through us. That's the ministry. He has committed to us a ministry on a word of reconciliation. Reconciling men to himself. How much years of that you can celebrate? I know some of you think, well, we have our Independence Day, we have a celebration of that, uh, our, our anniversary or something like that. We, wasn't, we were not born to celebrate the day we were born. We were born for the purpose for which God placed us here. So I may sound different, do a lot of different things. I'm in a relationship with somebody who's different. He just renovates your mind and show you all the foolishness that people applaud. And make you feel like you're strange. And people look at you strange. When you say something, they look at you strange. But where we get these things from? Where we got them from? So I'm saying here to you tonight, in the name of the Lord our God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, our fathers, blessed be his name. Let us be genuine and real. Take off the mask. Stop the pretense. Stop the hypocr hypocrisy. And let us live before God. Full stop. Full stop. Full stop. That's it. Brethren, it is so wonderful and simple. It is not complete. We're not trying to put on a show to be a thing before people. We are ministers of God. With one intention, that you may know him, understand his heart and mind, know his will and desires, build a relationship with him, become more Christ-like, manifest the life of God, bring glory to God. Full stop. Full stop. Not what I'm Dr. So and so and so. Somebody said to me <laughs> sometime back, you know, people grading up now from a prophet or, a, you know, you, you, you ain't graded up to an apostle yet? <laughs> I mean, I am amazed. I am just amazed. So you have to be upgraded to apostle and upgraded to this. And you have to have how much people are under you? How much people you have under you? How much church is under you? That speaks of your greatness. It's amazing. God does not see us, man. Sees greatness to man is not greatness to God. 
Success to man is not success to God. God views success differently. And until you understand these things, I was talking about something. I said, Lord, I can't tell you what I was talking about. And he says, Lemoth, many of the things you just brought before me that men view as success, they're not even in connection with me. And I thought, whoa, Jesus, Lord. He said, that self-parading, and he went on to share some things with me. He said, I view success differently. He's God. Now, I remember a particular minister, I remember we were going to different places, and I remember, <laughs> I, I know he also wanted to go, I'm not talking about my pastor, not him, not him, but died. I'm talk, not talking about him. And I remember while praying, we were supposed to be going on a journey, and I was praying, I said, Lord, do you want me to go? He says, no. And as of now, I do not want you to continue to follow that man. He's on his own beat. I thought, did I hear right? He's on his own beat. So I had to call and say, well, I'm sorry, I'm not able to go, so and so. But why, so and so? I said, no, that's it. And that was it from then. You're, you're, you're on your own beat. See, the thing about, uh, about us, we applaud things that we see because man look at the out order. Parents, because he does not see the heart or the motive of what is being done. We'll be shocked to know when you get to heaven. Those persons you never thought would be re receiving rewards, you'll be shocked to know when you get there. Because God don't see things the way people see them. <laughs> He's not that kind of God. So I say to you, serve the Lord fully. Be real before God. Don't mask anything. Even if you try to mask, you cannot mask from God. He knows the secret of the thoughts. He knows the heart of all men. Would you please stand before him tonight? Hallelujah. How do you feel that? You feel free? Is it so simple? It is so simple, saints. It is so simple. Oh, glory to his name. It is so simple. So I'm expecting of you, my brethren, that when we come together here again and you begin to praise God, that you are not conscious of people listening to you. You're just trying to just make some noise or do some things to, to get people's attention. Just get God's attention. Let's get away from the dry biscuit thing. Too much cricks. Yeah, no, 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 too much cricks business. Let get, let's get the anointing that's in us very active by being real before God. Hello, somebody, by being real before God. Let's get all the cricks business out the door. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel, I feel such, such it's, it feels so liberating. And God has the final say in your life. Nobody saves you but God. <laughs> and no one can tell God not to be merciful to you. No one can tell God what to do. If they ask anything contrary to his will, it's not going to happen. He only responds to his will and his desires. You are his child. Let's be more conscious of God than we are of other people. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you tonight. Your word will not return to you void. It will accomplish what you please and will prosper in the things to which you have sent it. Father, we thank you for the simplicity that is in Christ. And that you, Lord, looks at the heart of us 24-7. Every motive, every intention is before you every single day of our lives. In all of our service to you, God, you see the motives of our hearts is naked. Thank you for your mercies and your goodness. And Father, I pray tonight that every one of your children would walk before you just as you desire. We walk before you with the consciousness 
of your presence, the consciousness of you being aware of every thought and motive of our heart and everything that we do on the inside, Lord, that you are aware of it, that all the hypocrisy, all the falsehood goes out the door. And we just live before you, Father, and enjoy you. Lord, we want to enjoy you here. We know we'll enjoy you up beyond the earth, but we want to enjoy you here. Teach us how to enjoy you here, Father God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Teach us how to enjoy you here, precious Father. You are our Papa, our Papa. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Teach us how to enjoy you. Lord, deliver us from the religious bondage that has clouded our minds, the religiosity that has clouded our minds. Strip it off our being, gracious Lord, and help us to live before you, to live before you, to enjoy you, to enjoy you, precious Lord, to enjoy you. Oh, come on, bless his name tonight. Come on, bless his name tonight. Bless his name tonight. Forget about who's next to you. Forget about who's watching you, listening to you. Oh, glory to God. Bless his name. He's watching you. He's listening to you. Let him hear your voice. He hears our voice individually. Individually, he hears you. Glory to God in the highest. Oh, glory to God in the highest. Praise and honor and glory and power and strength to you. Oh, come on. Bless his name. Come on. Bless his name from your heart. From your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to our God. Hallelujah to our God. Hallelujah to our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the Lord. Oh, blessed be the Lord. Come on. To you be honor and glory. To you be power and strength. To you be dominion. Dominion. Strength and honor. Glory <laughs> and power. Wisdom and strength. Blessed be the Lord our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, just shout unto God, somebody. Shout unto God, somebody. Bless the name of the Lord our God. Oh. You know something? Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit just said, a few of you here tonight, you're more concerned about all the bad things that God saw. And so you're not released. So right when you, you can't really praise the way you're supposed to because there's a lot of stuff and you, you're still pondering on those things. So right here, right under your breath, nobody next to you have to hear because God hears. Just talk to him. Just get your relief. Don't leave here with those weights. Don't, don't leave here with them. Whether it is weight of guilt, whatever the weights are, you can get rid of it. It is written. You can come boldly to the throne of grace. Boldly. Not afraid. Boldly. And there you receive what? Mercy. And grace to help. In times of need. And again it is written. If you confess your sins. He is faithful and just. To forgive you. And to cleanse you. From all unrighteousness. You just have to believe exactly what the scripture said is what is going to happen. And the moment you do, it's gone. So right where you are tonight, right where you're standing, in Jesus' name, go ahead and talk to him. Because you can't, you can't really praise the way you're supposed to because you feel so weighed down by whatever the mask is. Oh, just throw the mask off. Throw the mask off. I, I don't want to tell you what you should say. You just know that he's listening to you. You tell him exactly. Don't, don't hide anything. Make no, make no excuse for anything. Just lay yourself open. You are at fault. You are at fault. Your, was your choice? Was your choice? Because you can't lie to God. So just tell him. J just lay down. Go ahead. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. He hears you. He listens to you. You are his child. You don't have to be afraid of him. You don't have to be afraid of him. You don't have to be afraid of him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The devil is a liar. He wants to make you feel that you need to be afraid of God. No. Your father loves you. Talk to him. Tell him. 
All the weight, the burden, get it out. Cast all your cares on him, for he cares for you. All your cares, all your cares, cast it on him. He cares for you. He cares for you, glory to God. He cares for you. He cares for you. He cares for you. Your father cares for you. The devil is a lie. Your father cares all about you. All about your situations. All about your circumstances. And will show himself strong on your behalf. He cares for you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Harabo Sakamanda. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy One. Thank you, Glorious One. Thank you, Marvelous One. Thank you. Thank you, Precious One. Thank you, Exalted One. Thank you, Exalted One. Thank you, Rabo Soto Ramando Rabo Soko Ramanda. Rete Yarabo Sika Ramando Rabo Soto Ramanda. Rende Yendo Rabo Soto Ramaha. Ye Rabayando Rabo Sakamanda. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, great is our God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Glory to your holy name. Glory to your holy name, Father. Glory to your holy name. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He's merciful, he's kind, he's gracious, he's loving, he's caring, he's compassionate, he's forgiven, he's restoring, he's everything that is good, he is the embodiment of all that is good. He is the embodiment of all that is good. <laughs> oh, hallelujah, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's get excited about God. Let's get excited about our Father. Hallelujah. He is not boring. He's exciting. He's exciting. Glory to God. Thank you, Master. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Before I turn over to Pastor Margaret, I wanted to know that we continue in our prayer time Tuesday and Thursday. We dress in our national colors. They call this dress down, whatever it is. Once we come in a uniform, he is assigned to us during this duration of our time of prayer with fasting and ending sometime in this month of October, is it? Pastor, the 20-something of this month. So we continue, so we meet on Tuesdays, we meet on Thursdays for our prayer time uh, for this blessed, beautiful nation of Trinidad and Tobago as he assigned us uh, to stand in the gap for the nation. So we continue Tuesdays and Thursdays, and again we're here on, on Saturday, the Lord's willing to continue what he's asked us to do as we listen to his beautiful voice, and as we enjoy him this week. Let this week coming be one of the most enjoyable week that you've had with God. Let it be one of the most enjoyable weeks you've had with God. Let me say it again. Let it be one of the most enjoyable week you have had with God. And from here on, let it continue. Let it continue. Thank you, Father. And so, Father, thank you for sharing with us all that you shared with us tonight. Thank you, Father God for the consciousness, let it remain with us, that this consciousness that you brought before us, that it's not a condemning consciousness, but an awareness and a sensitivity of your presence with us to do us good and not harm in the name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you and we praise you and we bless your holy name. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. 